<clears throat> Come on, YouTube. Von Yinzer, hello. I hate stupid people. Hello, hello. I'm trying to get some things under control real quick. Um, apparently, the link I sent doesn't even want to work. What is going on? So basically, what's been happening is last week, if you guys know I use StreamYard, um, I set up the streams every week on my phone, and then I go live from my phone. And so far, last week and today, I've been able to set the streams up, but when I go to go live, it just doesn't work. I don't know what's going on and why it's doing that. Um, I'm trying to get a... Click the first one you posted. Okay, maybe it's working out. I'm not sure. Um, okay, well, anyways, I'm not going to worry about it. We're here now. Um, I'm getting the video pulled up on my other screen so that way I can chat. And um, uh, Mike says it's working now. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. Um, I actually was trying to get... Uh, OBS software up and running. That's what how Fish Rescue uses. I used to use it, um, but as soon as I opened it, I haven't opened it in like a year. It was like, hey, we got to download like 30 updates. So I was like, screw that. Um, I'm not trying to mess with that. But um, here we go. So hopefully um, really 2233 says I can't see a thing. Um Everyone else says audio and video is good, so maybe, I don't know if the link was bad. I don't know. YouTube has been killing me with this. Let me close that and close this. Okay. Anyways, I got my cup of joe. I was, I was, I thought I was prepared. Um, I did watch the OFR live stream. They were giving me some love tonight. Big Rich had a lot of nice things to say about me. I, I really appreciate that, Big Rich. Um, so, yeah, like, I appreciate uh, OFR, you know, shouting me out as much as they did tonight. That was awesome. Um, Von, Yenzer, Von Yenzer, I did see your post in the other stream about the 614 fertilizer. Um, you said that you saw a lot of promise and you saw growth on your Amazon swords and planet tanks. Kudos for a great product only two weeks in. Uh, I, I said it before, and Von Yenzer, thank you for the kind words, and thank you for buying the product. Um, I said it before in previous live stream that um, I believe it's a really solid product, uh, so much so that uh, Oddball Aquatics uh, prefers my fertilizer over a lot of the other name brands. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I guess that's a side plug for our sales. I'm out of stock on them. It, it, you guys liked it so much that I'm actually sold out. And um, that's what the sales have been going for uh, this month. Uh, every week I've been doing a new sale. Make sure you're subscribed to the email. It's 614fish.com. Um, every week I put out a new discount code. Um, last week's was Nilo Products, which is we're talking about fertilizer. Nilo uh, Aquatics does thrive. Um, this has been around for many, many of years. It's a really great product. And um, I decided to discontinue these in favor of my own brand, right? I was selling them side by side, and then I sell out mine before I sell out these. So I'm working on getting rid of these. And these were 30% off last week. That sale's no longer active, but these were 30%. So the sale this week, which if you're an email subscriber, you would got the discount code uh, days ago. And... Uh, it's for my media pads. So we're talking about house brand and media pads, which are these guys. I'm sure you guys know what media pads are. It's basically filters, uh, with no specific design to any brand. So it's not like cups specifically for a hang on back or canister filter. They're just pads. And these are, it's, it's one big sheet that's folded over in half. So if you guys can see, you know, you can see the line. So it's, you know, twice as long. You basically get one of these pads, and then you can retrofit it into any uh, filter system that you have. 
And that was the original topic of tonight's video was about filter pads and how I use them and how um, you guys can use them. That's why I sell them. And that was all supposed to be able to do it from my phone so I could take you guys out into the fish room to show you how I use them. But right now I'm tethered to a webcam. So my plans have kind of gone uh, to crap. Let me, how do I, man, I forget how to do stuff on this program. There we go. Anyways, so the code for this week's sale is actually not a code. It's an automatic discount. If you go on the website, 614fish.com, and you buy any of the 614 pads, that's what I call these, they, they're just called pads, um, it automatically, once you put it in your shopping cart, takes 20% off. So all the media pads are on sale for 20% off. Um, somebody in California, um, I don't want to say their name because privacy reasons, bought all of my filter fleece pads. So I'm sold out, and those or that order was placed last night. Most of my orders come in while I'm sleeping. Uh, so I feel like all you fishy people are up late online, you know, doing your orders. Um, it came in at like 1.30 in the morning, and uh, they bought all my filter pads, the poly pads. Um, so I don't have any to even show you because I'm sold out. But I do have the nitrate, phosphate, ammonia, and the carbon. The carbon is probably my favorite um, specialty pad. Um, and it's just a, it's a filter media pad with carbon infused into it. So what does that do for your tank? Well, carbon really does two things. Carbon, on the which majority of the people know, uh, is a water clarifier. So it helps pull out colors. So if you have tannins in your water, you don't want the tannins. So like, let's say you did a driftwood tank and tannins are great, but you might not want the, the brown tint to your water, the tea water. Um, carbon helps remove that, it removes those impurities. Um, it really removes fine particles, probably down to like a molecular level that I can't fathom, but uh, it's really, really good at making your water really clear. The other thing it does, it removes medications. So you need to keep that in mind that if you're running carbon in your tank and you need to dose a tank, um, let's say you don't have a quarantine tank in your display tank, whether it's a five gallon or a 55, 75, whatever, you need to treat the whole tank with uh, general cure, medicine, stuff like that. If you already have carbon, whether you have a hang on back filter and you got those like cartridge inserts, if you're already hot rodding and you're using um, a media pad. So if you can imagine if you had a hang on back, instead of buying those cartridges that are five bucks for a box of them, you could buy a big media pad, which I think they're all eight bucks pre-sale, somewhere around eight bucks. You could cut a lot of inserts out of a media pad and use those. Anyways, if you're running carbon and you start dosing medications, that carbon's going to pull the medications out of the water. So most medications will say on the box to remove carbon from your system. So make sure you guys do that. You take that carbon out, do your medication treatment, and always do the full treatment. Um, that's one of the biggest things where when somebody orders um, some medications, and let me grab a box real quick. I like, I like props. So let's say somebody orders general cure and they treat it. And let's just say, let's see what it is. So with most, most medications, when you get the packet style, a packet's for 10 gallons, double check, read the instructions. But most of the, most of the medications are one packet per 10 gallons. It makes it really easy. You got 10, a 20, a 40, a 55, I always recommend doing the dose higher. So you dose six packets for a 55 instead of five. Don't try to like use half of the packet. Dose the six, you'll be completely fine. But General Cure says in the instructions at the top that you need to repeat it after 48 hours. You'll be surprised at how many emails. I don't want to say how many. It's not like I get thousands of them. But I get emails about medications, about dosing it on their 75 gallon tank. And if this general cure comes with 10 packets, one box is not going to treat that tank. So they're going to use eight packets to treat a 75. 
They only have two packets left. Well, you got to retreat the tank after 48 hours. Repeat dose after 48 hours. Wait another 48. Change 25% of the water. And then add fresh activated carbon or replace filter cartridge. So they, they, they should have told you, step one, remove activated carbon filter cartridge. So there you go. So you would for 75, you would need two of these boxes to do a full treatment. And now I'm getting on a side tangent about medication treatments, but I think it kind of goes in with that whole carbon thing. Make sure you take the carbon out before you do your medications. Now, let's say you get your tank done and or your medications done. Uh, they've been sitting there for a week. Everybody looks great. Your water changes have probably already pulled out the medications. You want to put your carbon back in. Now, you're, you're probably running that carbon for filtration. You want that crystal clear water, especially in a nice planted tank. Really gives you something great to look at. That carbon also will help pull out any trace elements of that medication. And while I feel like personally I wouldn't worry about it, uh, I feel like water change is going to pull all that out. Um, you could have the carbon pull out trace, so you don't have to worry about fish being in medications extra time than needed. Not that's going to harm the fish, but it's going to help them build immunity to that medications. Um, I know that I believe it was Corey um, said that, you know, th people speculate that over time fish almost build up immunity to certain medications, especially when they're treated over and over and over again. Um, so to help avoid that carbon can uh, play a role in that. So after treating, Everything's great. Some new carbon. If you're already using carbon, if you're not using carbon, I would not suggest buying carbon. Just stick to your regular media pads or your filter car cartridges, whatever you're using. Um, I'm kind of ignoring chat right now because I'm trying to keep on a roll with my thought process. I will get into the chat um, to see what everybody um, is talking about. And I try to answer questions. And as always, tag me if you have a question directed to me. Um, I know there's in every live stream, I'm in live stream, other people's live streams all the time. There's always side chats. But if you do have a question, tag me so it shows up on my screen um, as bright orange and I'll be able to read it quicker. But um, <clears throat> anyways, I did get my, my coffee, so I'm happy that I got my coffee now. I do have to work tomorrow. And uh, that kind of makes me sad. But uh, I, I get off at noon, and at noon, Ohio State Buckeyes, which is my favorite football team. I don't follow really sports at all except for my college football here in Ohio. Um, I could care less what other colleges are doing. I just follow my Buckeyes. But they're supposed to play at noon, so I get off work. I'm going to come home, flip on the game. I actually have a local fish order that was placed that's for pickup, and I got in contact with the gentleman, and he's coming tomorrow to pick up his goods doing the social distancing. Um, I don't allow people to come into my house ever unless I know them uh, somehow other than a sale. So what that means is like uh, looking at my screen, let's say Von Yenzer showed up. Von Yenzer is welcomed in my house. I know who Von Yenzer is. He still might be a crazy son of a gun. I don't know, but I feel a little bit better when it's somebody that just places an order for a local pickup you're not allowed in my house. Uh, Havana is my trained attack dog, and so is Charlotte. And uh, I don't want to uh, break their diet. So, um, anyways, I got a pickup order coming tomorrow. The gentleman in California that placed the order that bought me out of the poly pads uh, was actually the largest order of the week. So, I truly appreciate that order. And, um, yeah, so let's talk about some other pads. So we got the Carbon, which is probably, uh, in the email, if you read it, it's the number two seller, the Polyfilter pads. I have a, let me show you this pad right here. So there's a poly, Polyfilter and Polyfleece. The Polyfleece is sold out. This is a Polyfilter, which is sold out. I do have some inventory that came in. I just haven't been able to bag and tag them yet. So this is just standard filter material. This is going to remove your solid waste out of your water. So the particles you're seeing, that's what these pads are for. 
Now, if you leave these pads in there for an extended amount of time, they are going to grow bacteria and they will be a biological filter, but these are really meant to be replaced. Uh, this is the tissue paper for your aquarium. Um, if you want something that stays in the long term, I'd recommend sponge filter. Uh, sponge filter will hold up way better than any kind of poly pad. Um, in kind media pad, they're really disposable. They're meant to be replaced. But these are great. So, like I said, hang on back filters. Like, this is a good size. You can make a lot of filters out of this. But there's a, a one filter I want to talk about that a lot of people just don't think it's possible or um, don't really understand how to do it in sponge filters. Um, let me grab a sponge filter and I can show you. <laughs> All right, so here is a sponge filter I sell on the website. This is Hikari brand. Um, it's the only one I sell, and um, just because I've had really good luck, and I don't want to promise this, but in a lot of the sponge filter boxes, you get special extras, right? So this one has some Vibra, Bright, Vibra Bites, which is a really good food, uh, especially if you have any fish that are stuck on blood worms, uh, like a lot of wild-caught fish. Uh, might have problems transitioning onto flake food. Um, and the Viber Bites mimics like blood worms and fish love it. So let's say you have a sponge filter. Everybody knows what a sponge filter is. I use them in a lot of tanks. I also use the box filters. Um, box filters, you can cut these up, cut them to fit. Bam, you got a polishing pad in your box filter. What about sponge filters? The problem with sponge filters are what if you do want to add carbon to pull medications out or to really clear up that water to remove that uh, tinge, that brown tinge from driftwood? Well, you don't have a place to insert carbon into this thing, right? You can wrap sponge filters, right? You wrap it up like a hot dog in a bun. Bam. Cut it to size, right? Now, you could uh, use rubber bands. You kind of need a bigger rubber band. I prefer using a zip tie. So, a zip tie is not going to deteriorate in water. You can wrap a sponge filter with an extra layer of media. And I would, I mean, there's no point in wrapping it with this because, you know, these are disposable. You know, you're eventually going to have to throw this away. Where a sponge filter, you don't have to throw it away. You rinse it. Make sure you rinse it in tank water. And not under tap water if it's got chlorine in it, because that can kill the beneficial bacteria that's in the sponge. And just so everybody knows, Hikari sponge filters are fine filters. They're not coarse. So they will clog technically quicker than a coarse, but they really do pull out a lot of uh, material from the water. So that's that's why I like them. Um, it's more technically more maintenance in the long haul, but I really like the Hikari filters. Anyways, you could wrap a carbon filter around this, right? I use a zip tie. You can get like a bag of them from the dollar store. Um, even if they're the short ones from the dollar stores, you can connect multiple, put a cable tie or a zip tie around it, holds it on there. Now you're pulling water through that carbon. That's going to help remove those tannins from your water. And I know this sounds like a sale pitch. I'm just trying to give some education out there of how you can use these products um, if you need to use that product for that reason, I put the sponge filter back in the box, make sure I don't lose any parts and you guys could buy this one. I'll even sign the box for you if you want. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. I'm gonna hop in chat for a minute. That way I can drink my coffee and, uh, see how everybody's doing. Um, I hate stupid people's here every week. Good to see you. Uh, Patty, Larry D, Cooper's Aquatics. Great to see you guys. Uh, I see some new faces tonight. Um, cool to see everybody here. Fishmark Fish Room. Worked on the fish room all day today. What a good day. Yes. Sometimes it, it's it's good. Typically, Sunday is my fish room day. So I work all week, come home, feed the fish, do my orders, uh, Basically, then it's time to relax with the dogs and then go to bed, repeat. Saturday kind of is up in the air with either doing things with friends. Um, last weekend, I helped out Josh at OFR, 
to get rid of that tank from Matt's Monster Fish. You saw the video on their channel. Hopefully, you saw it on my channel. My channel really didn't show very much. It's kind of more of a behind-the-scenes type video because um, I was busy helping, so I didn't have time to record. Um, also, a lot of the video in Josh's, while we're at Matt's Monster Fish, if Josh was working, I was the one actually recording. So I was playing cameraman uh, for the OFR channel. Um, to get that content out to you guys. So um, that's kind of like Saturdays. I don't know what Saturdays are. It's a wild card. That's the best way to describe it. Um, tomorrow I work. Tomorrow is a football game. So Sunday is my cleaning day. Sunday is when I do like the laundry for the week, uh, clean bathrooms or, or vacuum, all that stuff, do water changes on the tanks. The tanks are mature enough now to where I'm only doing water changes once a week and just doing top offs in between. Um, they're all on cycled media and all the tanks have plants once a week water change. And it's still the standard, my J hook, which does um, like 40% on 20 gallons and it does like 30 to ish percent on the 29s. Um, the flow through rack system, that's the easy one to change. I flip a valve. The water pump, it's a central filtration system, basically. Uh, it pumps it to my sump, and I let it run nonstop open to the drain. And basically, it drains out the whole bottom sumps. So all four, all five sump tanks on the bottom racks, they basically go down to pump level height. So it drains all that water out. I come Once it's, I hear it stuck in air, I shut the valve, and I turn the fill valve on. I pump in... 100 gallons of water, or not even 100 gallons because my drum's only 55. So 50 gallons of water, and then I had to refill up the drum, and then the next day I add another 50. Super easy. That system, because it, it's heavily planted. You guys have seen the videos. Heavily planted. Uh, nitrates are never above 10 parts per million. Um, so water changes on that is probably once a month with weekly top-offs because... I don't run lids on almost all the tanks in that fish room. When Josh was over here uh, Saturday, he mentioned running, you know, if I ran lids, it keeps moisture down because I had to buy one of those big dehumidifiers. Um, I don't run lids because I want maximum light because I do grow plants to sell. Um, so the lids I have are those twin wall because they're the most cost effective lids versus buying glass lids. It's the plastic lids. Well, their twin wall sets two layers of light to go through. And I just want to pump out as much par as possible to get the growth. And speaking of growth, my Madagascar lace bulbs, they start off as bulbs with little shoots. And I don't know how long I've had them, a few weeks, a month. I'm having plants this long. And I say that because I just shipped one today. The guy bought a bulb plant and he's getting a, a full plant out of it. So hopefully that's a good surprise for them. Um, but yeah, let me scroll through the chat. <sighs> Ohio fish rescue with a hundred dollars super chat, big rich. I'm sure that's you, man. I appreciate it. that's, that's the biggest super, super chat I've ever had. That's the, uh, that's the most amount of money I've gotten out of one live stream. So big rich, I appreciate that brother. Wow, that's I need to like do a record of what a live stream like super chat total will be because you just smashed it. Thank you so much. Um, that's super awesome, Rich. It could be Josh, but I'm I'm betting it's Rich. I feel like Rich is my my biggest supporter of the live streams. Um, Josh is probably out messing in the fish room right now, and wow, that's crazy. Oh, uh, wait, how do I? Where? I'm, I'm running two different programs right now to try to flip flop uh, between chats and it's kind of making me slow in the head. Sorry, the coffee's not kicking in. Uh, where is it? Oh, man, I don't know. My chat's messed up on this one. Maybe, oh, you know what? It doesn't let me go so far back. That's why. I was trying to highlight it, but I can't do it. So anyways, OFAR, thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. 
that that works towards some gas money for me to drive back up there. But Haley's here. She said, "What's up, Buttercup? What's going on, Haley? Hope everybody's doing." Sixty-two people here, according to uh, this channel. All right, so I see Mickey's here and Danica and Aquatics. Everybody's here tonight. Richard Maloney with a five dollar super chat. Five dollar for Auntie's tank. No more updates. No more money. Get it done for Christmas. So I can update you on that. Um, I ordered manzanita wood, and I ordered a lot of it, a lot of pieces. There's probably like forty pieces of wood coming. A lot of it's nano stuff, and then some bigger pieces. Um, so I ordered a bunch of manzanita. I was actually looking at 3D printing like a forest. I said, screw that. Let's go uh, more natural looking. Um, so I ordered a bunch of manzanita wood. And I ordered it, I think, Monday. I didn't realize that shipping was parcel ground. And it's coming from California. And it's supposed to be here next Wednesday. So as soon as that comes on Wednesday... That'll be the next video update. I'm going to start scaping the, the, the trees. I'm going to use the manzanita wood as the trees in the tank. And then uh, I want to get substrate in there, get some dwarf hair grass in there, get it planted, get it growing. And that way I have an established or mostly established uh, planted tank for my aunt. And speaking of Christmas, that would be a great Christmas present for her. That's, that's a great idea. So the goal would be to get it done by Christmas, and uh, that would be super awesome if I can get it done. But yes, I am still moving forward. I'm just waiting on that manzanita wood to come here. The egg crate, which was the last video, that's the base. So I'm going to attach the wood to the base, and from there I can do the, the Lego theme, get the building put in, the little action figure Legos, and then move forward. And for some reason, my iTunes just opened up. What? Not only is YouTube messing with me, my computer's messing with me tonight. But, um, so, what other topics was I going to mention? So, I, I, we talked about the sale on the media pads, 20% off of any of the 614 pads. Kind of showed you how do you can use them. Um, I do believe I do have a video somewhere of me showing, uh, actually using these in my sump. Uh, in my trickle tower sump system which is the, the flow through so the flow through sump uses plants to filter nitrates out the mechanical part of my system is like the dollar general uh trickle tower we use to pull out drawers their makeup holders it's those little bins you buy with the drawers with just media pads shoved in it with holes so the water trickles down through so it's filtering it's also oxygenating that water as it goes through the system it's kind of a win-win adding oxygen, filtering water, good stuff. Those I like because I can just pull the bin out, take it to the trash can, dump it, put a new media pad in it, away I go. Those media pads have been in there for a few months now, so I should do an updated video on what does it look like after a few months. So it's actually really not that bad. With the middle row tanks, they're so heavily planted that a lot of the detritus builds up in those tanks because um, there's the Christmas moss, there's jungle vow, like they're heavily planted. So when the water drops from the, the top row into the second row of tanks, you know, it has to go through all those plants. So the detritus builds up in those tanks. So really the media pads don't even have to do that much debris removal. All right. Um, let me scroll. So, uh, Richard Maloney, thank you so much for that five bucks. I appreciate it. Uh, we're just, we're setting the bar too high now and this is going to be OFR's fault. So we're now at what? $105 in this live stream tonight. Um, I don't think I'll ever be able to beat that again. And I guess maybe if OFR comes back in next week or next month or next year and drops another hundred dollar bill on that, that's crazy. But Richard, thank you so much. Star Wars theme tank. It is alive and well. Uh, alive and well. Not really alive or well. But the dream is still there. I'm working on it. I'm just waiting on the wood to get here. Wednesday the 25th. 
I think it's the 25th, right? Yeah, the 25th. That's when tracking says it will be here. It would be sweet if it shows up sooner, but Wednesday. So we'll see. Uh, Show you fish. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Richard. Yes. Uh, Josh Price is here too. Actually, feeding fish while listening. Well, I got two of the Price guys in here. That's that's also a record, I think. But um, so I might have mentioned last week in my live stream about the 2000 plus build, how I could foresee myself trying to rush it and get it done sooner and just end up doing that in my fish, current fish room. I'm still thinking about doing that. I was uh, daydreaming about it earlier today. So a mutual friend, uh, friend, acquaintance, acquaintance, friend, uh, Clinton. It's actually one of Josh's good friends always helps out the rescue. You mentioned him on the live stream tonight. He's got a Ford truck. That's, was always broken. He's got a newer one now that's uh, way nicer. Anyways, Clinton just got some freshwater stingrays I saw. I don't know if it was on TikTok or if it was on Snapchat, something like that, right? Maybe it was just Facebook stories. And uh, I saw a pup, a freshwater pup, and that's really one of the fish I want to get is freshwater stingrays. And so I feel like when I take down rack system one and two, which was always the plan, I might try to build. Can I say a monster tank finally uh, in its place? Um, because then I don't have to worry about heating and all that stuff. And I can keep moving um, with the plan of monster tank. And I actually want to make multiple tanks that are larger, um, especially after like moving that. I think it's a 750. So I labeled my video as a thousand. I originally, for some reason, had thousands stuck in my head. Um, and then once we were at Mad's Monster Fish's house, um, or maybe it was when OFR's video dropped, he said, Josh said 750. So the 750, like once I saw that, I'm like, man, I really want a big tank. I'm really not big into monster fish. Like arowanas really don't do anything for me. Iridescent sharks, they're not, they're just not my thing. I think they're cool. But that's not something I would want to keep. Um, I don't know. I, I've always been like community fish. Um, I, did, I do like the parrot fish. So like, especially like the blood red parrot fish. I don't know, there's something goofy about them. It reminds me of a goldfish. How they kind of have that goofy look face to them. A lot of people hate parrot fish. I think they're kind of cool. They, I don't know. They just I don't know, bring some sort of smile to my face when I see them. Because they just look funny to me. But, you know, something like that. I like Oscars. I think Oscars have quite a bit of personality. They do get rather large. So I don't know. Even if I had a monster tank, I don't know if I'd want to necessarily get Oscars. Uh, just because I know how big they get. Even if the tank can hold them. Um, I think I'd rather have, instead of a ton of, or not a ton, but instead of having really big fish, I'd rather have a ton of medium-sized fish. But I'm really thinking uh, continuing my central filtration, um, what I've learned from what I have right now, into bigger tanks. With that being said, I'll probably stop selling fish online and make it more of a hobby channel um, or continue doing like hard goods or um, maybe plants. Plants are really easy because plants don't run away from you. When you try to catch them, right? Fish are so time consuming whenever an order comes in. Um, so the tanks that the import, the import tanks, I try to keep those plants low level or easy to pull out to be able to net fish. Because when you're talking community fish, smaller fish, uh, the diamond tetras are the worst fish that I've had so far to catch. And they're fairly big you know they're in the the one and a half to two inch range they have been the worst i originally the worst for me were the pygmy quarries pygmy quarries they're so tiny it's hard to you know pin them into a corner especially when the tanks aren't bare bottom and they're fast well somehow diamond tetras are even faster and more elusive they've been the worst fish i've had as far as trying to catch them 
the easiest fish are basically anything that's in my 10 gallons. If it's in my 10 gallon tanks, the net is exactly as wide as the tank. I can just put the net in the back and basically skim it forward and catch whatever I need to catch. The diamond tetras are terrible. So I'll probably end up stop selling fish um, and really community fish. It's not that profitable, especially now, like say these diamond tetras I've had for four months. Any profit out of those 50 I brought in has already been gone just from feeding them and, you know, electricity and stuff over four months. Um, with that being said, I still want to breed fish. So I think anything that I'm breeding, I'll sell. But as far as importing fish, I'm going to probably get away from the nano or community smaller fish. I'll leave that to some of the bigger online salespeople or your local um, fish stores to do that. Uh, the Denison Barbs, I did sell. So I told you guys I only brought six of these in. I sold three of them. Somebody bought three. So I got three left if anybody's looking for those. And um, <laughs> I just look over and read the most random message on my screen. And it's from Big Rich. I was made for loving you, baby. You was made for loving me. Kiss on the radio. I just, I, I, all I read was I was made for loving you, baby. And I was like, what, what what's the big rich getting into over there? Um, I know Chevy fish was here earlier. Um, she is a mod of mine. So hopefully Chevy fish, if anything crazy, he's getting out of a hand. Uh, it's under control, but um, yeah, let me uh, keep scrolling. I just saw some of my tags. Uh, at Ohio Fish Rescue from Von Yenzer. I probably wouldn't have found SE Aquatics if it were not for your channel. Um, that's pretty much most of my subscribers. Um, before, so if you guys, I got a lot of new subs this year, a ton of new subs this year. If you don't know the backstory, I started my channel, let's say a year and a half ago, two years ago. I had 400 ish subs. And then, um, I went to OFR, and the way I went to OFR was I was already friends with Lucas Brett's LRB Aquatics. Um, I had already been out to his house, and he had been to my house a couple times. Uh, good friends. He was going up to Ohio Fish Rescue. I don't even remember what the event was, but they were having some YouTubers up there, whatever was going on. I don't remember the specific event. It might have been the OCA. Maybe it was the OCA was going on. I'm not sure. I think it was OCA, though. OCA was going on. LRB was going up like a day early for with some YouTubers. Asked if I wanted to go. He asked Big Rich if he could bring me. Big Rich said, sure. So I show up to OFR. I was the first one there. Never been there before. Uh, no, it was nice out. They had the screen door. I knocked, and Big Rich is in the kitchen. He's like, come in. I was like, hey, what's up? I'm Steven. He's like, who are you? I'm like, I'm LRB's friend. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicest people I've ever met in my life. Big Rich, Josh, Tracy, everybody else there was super awesome. But man, we ended up, you know, have an awesome time. You know, we did a bunch of fishy things and we partied it up at night. Uh, the OCA, I think it was the OCA event, but the OCA people came and it was just a great time. And, um, I think it was like waking up and Big Rich made the biggest breakfast ever. He had every kind of breakfast meat and everything. I don't know if it was like pancakes and waffles and eggs and I forget what the, the I don't want to call it the redneck breakfast thing. There was some weird name to it, but he made this breakfast stuff. It was really good. Um, but I was like, after seeing all that, that he gave out to complete strangers, people he never met before, you know, here's a drink, crash here, we'll make you breakfast in the morning. Like, it, it was super awesome. And that's when I basically fell in love with OFR and how they are with the community. Uh, from there it was, I think I went back up for some other event and then some other event. Um, I know when the Tracy thing originally happened, uh, I drove up because Josh was at the house by himself. So I drove up there just to help him with anything that he needed help with. And it turned out there was actually nothing that he needed help with. So I hung out with Josh for a couple hours and I drove back home. And then, you know, the whole, 
uh, fish tank stands and the Bellagio. That's where my channel started getting more and more subs um, from the exposure there. So OFR has really, really grown my channel. And um, so if you guys are newer to my channel, that's how that came to be. Um, I know I got somewhere around like 50 new subs this week, somewhere around there. So if you guys don't know, I'm actually a mechanic by day, fish enthusiast by night. Um, I work on cars for a living. I've done that professionally now for 14 years. And then the whole business thing has been um, right around a year now. The goal was to do the fishy thing and have it hopefully eventually catch and take off to where I don't have to work on cars the rest of my life. That's the end goal. Um, I don't really foresee that happening. Um, like the sales are there, but it's not enough sales per day to really, um, to allow me to quit my day job, but I'm trying to grow the YouTube channel. So maybe between product sales and YouTube money and selling my body or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe one day I will have to work on cars, but, uh, I appreciate everybody's support. Vanyan Zer says, you live in Columbus, go hit TJ's and get the Barnyard Buster. Been there, done that. There's actually a TJ's like a couple blocks from my work. And we went there, it was probably like a year ago. We actually lost power at work like first thing in the morning. So a few of us just left work because a shop with no windows, first of all, we have one garage door. So when we lose power, we have to manually open that garage door to get any light into the building. Um... A shop without power, as far as mechanic shop, there's nothing you can do. Because now everything is punched. And by punch, you have to like clock in and out of each job that you do on a car through a computer. It's like when I go change spark plugs on a car, I have to punch onto a line that says I'm changing spark plugs. It's all like a paper trail through like warranty work. That's how I work for Audi. That's how Audi pays me. And... Um, no computers, no internet, nothing. Can't work on cars. Uh, when you lose power, you lose air, so you can't use air tools. I don't really use air tools. I use electric tools, but our racks are electric. Basically, nothing you can do. Um, so we went and got Barnier Busters. But they don't compare. When Big Rich does his big breakfast, nothing compares. It's like, so he ended up having this like electric griddle. And then he was actually, I'll, I'll take credit for this. I think he's, he has it. So he said he wanted a bigger one for more bacon because his was deep. He wanted something longer. So I think I found something on eBay or Amazon and it was like, I don't know, three or four feet long. It's, it's long, but it's like perfect depth for just doing bacon. So I'm pretty sure he bought that and uh, he just was constantly making bacon, making more pancakes, putting chocolate chips in the pancakes and, they had orange juice and all sorts of stuff. Like it's like a five star hotel when when he does his breakfast. Uh, five star hotel for sure. <laughs> Matt F said it's called OnlyFans. Uh, SC, I need an OnlyFans is what you're saying, and uh, maybe I can talk Big Rich into doing an OnlyFans page. Uh, Matt F. said, at SC, what was your first impression of that massive fish collection? So I've saw the videos on YouTube before I ever went there. Um, I knew who OFR was prior to me going there, all off of their pond video. So when Greg Woodstock came out and did the monster pond, that, you know, that's kind of, you know, how I fell into their channel. So I knew, like, what they had going on, but I didn't realize the scale of, of everything in the 4,400 was the tank that blew my mind. So I guess I'd never really thought like when big rich stands in front of it and, you know, it's as tall as he is or, you know, around his height, I, I guess I never really pictured how tall big rich is and how tall that tank is until I walked there. And I think when I walked in, I came in through the pool room so when you walk in, the 4400s on your left and it's the side, so you don't see anything. And you got the 3000 on the right. 
was like, man, this 3000 is big. It's down on the floor. I think if it was like off the floor, it'd look even bigger because you're like, whoa. But you're kind of looking down into it, but it's big. You know, it's really long. Like, man, this is a big tank. And then as you start to turn, you see, I think it's like the 550-ish gallon, like the Stingray tanks. But then you make that full turn and the 4400s in front of you. And that thing is, it's memorizing. It, it really is. And it's memorizing because of the size of it. It's such, being that, it's, you know, it goes directly from the floor. You know, it's taller than me. It's, it's like watching a big screen, not even a big screen TV. It's like being at a movie theater. You have the IMAX. That's what this, it's, it's like that, like a, a fish screen. And when I saw that, I was like, man, that's, that tank's probably, it, it's got to be my favorite tank there. Well, all right. No, I, I can't say that. It was my favorite tank there until the 1800 Bellagio Cichlid tank got up. Now that's my favorite tank. Um, you know, that I, the whole like tank sponsoring, I did the Cichlid tank just because I knew that 1800, once it was up and running, that would be the awesome tank to watch there and that tank is it's hands down my favorite tank there just because it's with the coral inserts and originally people were going to hate on the coral but with the bright colors of the coral and the bright colors of the cichlids it really pops and when you're standing back and it's you know what is it 20 feet long there's so much movement so much to watch and of course when you go to feed um my my video from when was that a few weeks ago? It was like kind of like the extra LFR clips when I was up there. I just took some sm small clips. You can act like you're about to feed them and they all swarm. And you know, Big Rich's video today, he I'm pretty sure it was today's video. He showed that, or maybe it was two days ago video. He showed when you go to feed them how the whole tank big basically empties and they all swarm. And that's just fun to watch because if you only saw this much of that tank while they're feeding, you're like, man, that tank is overcrowded but when you step back and you're not feeding them they're all spread out and swimming like they're they're super happy the water quality looks awesome on it now um it was kind of cloudy in the beginning because they were running those cancer filters but it's all caught up uh it just looks beautiful uh it's that's my favorite tank and um really before that the 1000 was it 1000 or no the 2,000 gallon tank was sitting on the floor empty. Um, I can't remember. The 1,000 was empty in the... I think this... No, the, they weren't empty. Were they just sitting on the floor? I can't remember now. It seems like really so much has changed at OFR this year. It's, it's nuts. So when the pandemic happened and everybody had to stay home and Josh was working from home, they did so much this year around OFR. And you guys have seen the videos, the constant updates. But now I'm just thinking like a year ago, I can't remember how things were set up. I remember Pittsburgh was over more. And, you know, it's just things are always evolving there. And I know when I was up there the other week, um, Josh said possibly something big is going to happen. Um which will be super awesome if it does. And big, I mean, as far as tank size. Um, I don't know. I, I I know they were talking about months and months and months and months ago. And then he brought it up again. So I don't know if they're making progress towards it. But something cool may be happening there. I know tonight they mentioned about expanding. Which that's actually the first I've heard of it. That would be super awesome too. But I know Josh mentioned something completely different than expanding. That would be super awesome. Um, he also mentioned about doing the central filtration. I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, they're basically on a flow through system, which is my rack system too. One tank feeds another, you know, all makes it back to their sump. Sump has the filter socks, filters it out, and then gets sent back out. They use the stingray pool as like the reservoir. Um, Josh was mentioning about doing a central filtration and what, I don't know exactly what style he would do, but a lot of fish farms run filter towers. So you might have like a 
500 gallon upright tower that you run your filtration through. Um, you can use sand, you can use bio balls. Um, you can actually do a combination of systems. You can use a fluidized bed with a fluidized sand filter. Um, and then also run if you want to filter socks to be able to do maintenance. There's a lot of things you can do, but if you had a filtration room, so that filters all the water, then you can basically think of it as like air system, but like an air system manifold. Um, I have one, but it's, I don't think it's in here. I think it's in the fish room. You basically split that water out to your tank. So instead of flowing through each tank, technically when you're flowing through each tank, nitrates from tank one go to tank two to tank three before it gets back to your sump system. And then however you remove nitrates, um, whether it's plants, using plants to remove nitrates, or if you're doing water changes to remove nitrates, um, that's a flow through system. If you use central system, if you have a, I'm the central pump, this is a tank. Um, the water will go from me to this tank, back to the filtration, goes from me to this tank, back to filtration. So it's basically like a spider web. Everything that starts at the center goes out and then comes back. What that allows you to do is you're running clean water to each single tank. Having a central filtration also means you're only maintaining one filtration system, not multiple tanks, not multiple cancer filters, things like that. So when you scale up your filtration, if you go above and beyond what you physically need, you might only have to maintenance that thing once every six months. Uh, especially with cancer filters that you're maintaining on something huge, maybe once a month, if not more, depending on how dirty the fish are. Uh, central filtration can really handle that load. Uh, I want to do a sand filter as my mechanical because it has the backwash function. I can backwash the water, not to my drain, but I actually want to run it to my yard and use that. Instead of wasting water down the drain, I want to repurpose it out to my yard. Um, during winter time, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm going to have to, you know, take it down the drain. But if I do the uh, monster tanks that I want to do, it's going to be whether I run one tank or four tanks, I want to run one filtration system. It will be the sand filter that Josh gave me um, when I completed the Bellagio. He gave me the glass pieces, the four foot by four foot. I think they're one inch thick Starfire glass, so the low iron. And he gave me a sand filter they had spare. Um, it's basically like if you ever had an above ground pool. Um, I don't know. Do underground pools use that? I have no idea. But it's those big canisters. They're big like globes. It's got the valve on top. It's for like recirking water or back flushing, stuff like that. Um, he gave me one of those, and that's what I want to use. I may also I want to use that for mechanical. It also holds a lot of biological. Um and then for nitrates, plants. I want to use plants to remove the nitrates because even on a central system, even though it's not flow through, if this is a community tank that's planted and then, then over there is a monster tank. If I take water, send it to here, plants are eating the nitrates. It's sending that clean water back to the sump. That sump's going to send that clean water out to the monster tank. That high nitrate water from the monster tank is going to come back to the sump anything's going to get converted, it's still going to send nitrates out, but it's going to send it to also this plant tank. So you can really set up some extra nitrate filtration on a system that has something that you can't have plants in, monster tanks. You, uh, It's kind of like with sumps on saltwater tanks if they run like an algae scrubber. Um, algae is really good at pulling nitrates out of water. So they might run like a nit or an algae scrubber uh, in a sump on a saltwater tank. I'm going to try to scroll. <laughs> Big Rich said sausage, gravy, and biscuits. Uh, Big Rich, I don't know if you mentioned it somewhere else, but what was that? It was like the butter and syrup stuff you made. I, I forget what you guys called it. You, you guys called it something that was different. I'm pretty sure it was like butter and syrup and maybe there was corn. No, no, no. I, I remember corn somewhere, too.
Um, Adele said, Ofar put out put the call out to get SC to a thousand subs so you can do the live streams. And what's funny is I can't even do my live streams right now. For some reason, I can't go live from my phone. And uh, I got some notifications. I don't know what's going on. Wouldn't let me go last weekend. Wouldn't let me go tonight. Um, I guess this weekend I'll mess around and try to figure out what's going on with that. Um, but the to be able to go live from your phone, so that way, like when you guys see me go live from Ohio Fish Rescue, you have to have a thousand subs to be able to do that. My goal was to get to a thousand, and OFR got me there, and uh, now I'm double that. I'm, I'm over. I don't know where I'm at now. Two thousand two point two. 7k so on the up and up i don't know where i'm going to end up up and up end up somewhere uh scrolling uh chat jumped um how fish rescue said it's the best thing for a hangover i see yes eating a bunch of food first thing in the morning is the best thing for a hangover. Unless you mention something else and I missed it. And then I don't know. I just agreed to <laughs> who knows what we're eating for a hangover cure. But hopefully it's breakfast. Um, Big Ridge said, we have your souls. Like, yeah, Josh mentioned, uh, sent me a message. I, I told him I'll have to come back up to get it, I guess. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. Hillbilly Delight. That's what it was. Hillbilly Delight. I knew it was something weird. Like I was like redneck something. Hillbilly Delight. Honey and butter mixed together, and then you dip your biscuits in it. Effing amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> it's the first time I ever even saw something like this was that first morning there. Big Rich made all this breakfast stuff, and he comes out, and he's like, oh, you got to have some of this hillbilly delight. Like, I just met this guy, and now he wants me to eat something called hillbilly delight. Like, who knows what this is? And I look at it, I'm like, it doesn't look, like, good because it's, like, butter and honey. So it looks weird because, you know, it's all mixing weird. No, nah, you put your your biscuits in it. It's super awesome. Um, Hillbilly delay. That's what it was. Uh, poop comment after food. Poor timing. I'm Patty. I'm my chat's all crazy. I'm everywhere. Hillbilly delay. That's that's the stuff. All I can think of is his breakfast now. Damn it, I'm telling you. All right, Big Rich. I think what I'm going to do is when I come up for the Sawzall, you're going to have to make your breakfast, and then we can do a live stream. We can do multiple live streams. We'll do like an OFR member live stream. Then I'll do a live stream. We can all, everybody in the community can eat breakfast together. Maybe, maybe I'll do one like Thanksgiving Day or something. Um, Thanksgiving this year, um, probably not going to my parents, um, because right now Franklin County, which is the county I'm in is at the worst, uh, COVID level ever. Um, like Ohio has got this like color codes and we're the only county in Ohio right now. That's the worst and we're the worst. So because of that, uh, my sister and I were kind of talking and I think we're not going to go to my parents, um, because you know, they're older and my mom's got uh a heart condition that i mean she's good so don't don't worry she's good but you know underlying condition that you know we don't want to risk um <laughs> adele said oh for food porn edition do what i'm telling you be like a uh, emerald in his bam we'll get a do live stream of big rich cook and everything I think I would have to borrow my buddy's camera and uh, get some like actual professional video of Big Rich cooking and doing his commentary, doing a little Salt Bay action. You know, can you see Big Rich doing Salt Bay, flicking his hair around? Like, yeah, it could be a good time. 
We'll have to do a live stream of Big Rich cooking breakfast, especially after like a Friday night live stream. So you you know Big Rich will probably be dragging a little bit in the morning after after his vanilla vodka and not his grape Kool Aid, but his grape packets. Um, he might not be wide awake in the morning, but I think it'd be awesome for a live stream. So we should do that. Patty says, I always plan on for eating after drinking. We used to, 10 years ago when I was younger, we go drink all night and then go hit up the Waffle House or um, TJ's. I'm trying to think there was um, Cane's because Cane's, when it first came to Columbus, was down on OSU campus. It was the only one around. So we'd go there and it was open like 24 hours a day. If not, it was open until like three or four in the morning. There was a country bar right next to it. So we, you know, bar hop, end up like last stop was this country bar because we knew when the country bar would close down, we could walk to Canes and get Canes greasy chicken fingers and fries with that cane sauce at two in the morning or two thirty, whatever time it was. It was super awesome. Chevy Fish said we use syrup and butter instead of honey and butter. We wanted to try the honey. Well, you gotta try it. Tiffany Weiss says, now I want big breakfast. I want a big breakfast. So, at my parents' house, we call it Big Breakfast. That's like the name. It's just called Big Breakfast. So, for Christmas, my sister's got her family, her kids. I got me and my my, my girls, which are my two dogs. Um, go to my parents' house for Christmas. My mom always makes big breakfast. It's, you know, think of Big Rich, but instead of feeding, like, all of OFR, you know, it's just the family, but, uh, I, I'm a breakfast person. I love breakfast for lunch or dinner or for breakfast, obviously, but, uh, breakfast food is good. Show you fish that we are level three as of today. Again, I don't know what the levels are here in Ohio. I don't know if it goes up to like level four, whatever it is. We're the highest right now, our County, which sucks. Um, starting tonight, they are on, um, Big Rich, I think it's statewide because the governor did it. Um, it's curfew. So everybody has to be home by 10 PM until I think it's 5 AM, something like that. So curfew, that's what they're trying to do, which it's got a lot of backlash because you're just making people go to bed earlier. And their whole thing is it's going to keep people from being in bars. But the thing is, you're going to be in a bar until 10 p.m. anyways. I don't really think curfew is the best solution to help slow the spread, but that's just my opinion. Um, I think if they want to do it, they need to do something more serious. Curfew, just, okay, like, I'll make sure I get my drinking done at the bar by 10 instead of by 2. Or, you know, that's just silly. Whatever. Syrup and butter is also amazing. So I don't know if it's a local chain or if it's a Ohio chain, but there's this breakfast place called Scrambler Marie's, uh, at least here in Columbus. It's really good. Um, I say it's like, like a rest. They're only open for breakfast. It's more of a restaurant. It's not like the quick diner, like a, like a Waffle House or a TJ's, it's like, I don't, don't want to say more upscale because it's not really upscale. It's just, it's a nice place. They have a thing called Uncle Moose's Manhandler or something like that. It's a skillet with like the potato cube, like hash brown style with like eggs and get that and then add hot sauce. I'm a big fan of hot sauce now on breakfast. I don't know what it is. If you get a skillet, Add some hot sauce. It's good. I'm not trying to do like the crazy hot sauce. Like, oh, oh, let's talk about OFR and hot sauce. You guys probably saw the OFR live stream of them doing the hot sauce challenge, right? I like a little bit of hot sauce. I don't like the, the burn your face off stuff. 
um, months and months and months ago. I don't even know. Sometime in the last year, I was up there for whatever reason. We're all sitting in the OFR kitchen talking. And they got the, the same bottles that you saw on their stream. They have those bottles sitting on the kitchen table. So I pick up a bottle. I'm like, what is this bottle? Like, oh, like crazy hot sauce. I don't want anything to do with that. Don't want nothing to do with it. Whatever. Half an hour later, I don't know what I did, but I rubbed my eye. Okay? All of a sudden, it felt like I got pepper sprayed. My eyes are burning so bad. I can't see nothing. And, yeah, just can't see nothing. It hurt so bad. People are laughing, whatever. Ten minutes later, Big Rich comes out of his bathroom crying because he went and peed. And he also touched the hot sauce bottles. And he grabbed his stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's all too sensitive down there. But, yeah, so Big Rich, he uh, his junk got a little hot. And then my eyes got burned. It was, And we didn't even eat the hot sauce. We just, I don't even know if he touched the bottles or how he got it, but. I moved a bottle and didn't even realize I had it on my hand. But uh, that was the most painful experience at OFR, I must say. <laughs> Adele said Big Rich burned his turtle. Big Rich and turtles. You know, he's probably thinking of Greg's turtle right now. And Colin says, it was great talking with all y'all, but I really have to go have pancakes now. <laughs> yep. I, I don't know. Like, I already ate dinner, but maybe I'll have to order some breakfast. Oh, man. Bunions there said, Patty for real, today I counted 24 noose, oh, nose nudists and seven no maskers. Yeah, I don't get that. Like, if you're, if you're trying to really prevent the spread of any kind of thing that's viral, like covering your mouth, I get it. Like, your mouth's your main probably source of spreading stuff, but not covering your nose, that, uh, that doesn't help. What time is it? Oh, guys, we are running late tonight. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for the super chats tonight. I truly appreciate it. Oh, far hitting that big $100 drop. Thank you so much. Uh, Richard and Von Yenzer, I hope I didn't miss anybody else. The chat was crazy. Uh, I want to see if I can scroll back. It won't even let me scroll back. If I missed your super chat, I do apologize. But thank you all for your continued support. Uh, we're going to try to hit 3K subs by the end of this year. I'm sure uh, with the continued support, we'll be able to get there. But I only got a month left to do it. It might be tough, but um, Star Wars content, hopefully next week when that Manzanita wood comes in. Other than that, guys, stay fishy if you're an OFR fan. If not, uh, be an OFR fan. So I'll see you guys. I don't know how to end this live stream because it's different. Hopefully, this live stream will be back next week so we can go into the fish room. But thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Stay safe. See ya. Maybe. Can I end it? <laughs>